favourite, Linda Barron, drops by. Nisha Paris puts Michael in the quiz spotlight. And there's music from Scottish songbird, Amy McDonald. know about the terrible plight of those servicemen and women who've lost their lives during the war in Afghanistan, but my next guest's story centres around something most of us never even give a thought to, the stray dogs that are caught up in the conflict. Here to tell us more is my late lunch guest today. It's a former Royal Marine, Penn Farthing, his wife, Petty Officer Lisa Farthing, and Patch Dog, the dog. <laughs> Tell us how you got involved with uh, trying to help the, the dogs. When I served as a Royal Marine out in Afghanistan 2006 to 2007, um, outside our Ford operating base were just thousands of stray dogs, because really? um, obviously they have no place in society out there at all. Um, and it was just, we used to put out leftover rations and the dogs would obviously come up and some would be quite friendly. So it's just like a, a magic carpet, really. So, so, sorry, w when you say that they, um, they had no place in society, do pe people not have pets? No, like, the, like um, in Afghanistan. when the Taliban were in power, nobody was actually allowed to touch dogs, so they wouldn't even have like a neutral program to obviously stop the strays. Um, but sadly, one of the things they would do, though, is actually have dog fighting. Um, and that's how we got involved, because the locals were actually holding a dog fight, and I didn't go out there to obviously promote animal cruelty, but to help them obviously defend themselves against the Taliban. Um, and perhaps you can see here, I don't know if the, the cameras can actually see that, but... He was found just as a puppy, and they were about to obviously cut the ears off, so he's had the end of his ear snipped. Um, but obviously he was rescued and just before they could do anything else. And it makes you wonder how dogs that are, are treated so cruelly can end up with nature so beautiful. Is this yeah. sort of thing? Yeah, mean, I mean, actually, really like people something. as well afterwards. Uh, is this is amazing. what I'm saying. Yeah. What did you think, Lisa, when he, when he said that this is what he wanted to do? Or, or were you... A dog yeah. lover as well. Yeah, I am a dog lover, and it, he blames me for getting him into dogs because um, I've always had dogs all my life. Um, but yeah, I was the connection at home, um, trying to find these places, you know, to get the dogs to safety. So um, he was literally on the phone. Have you found a rescue? Yet? So I what's about you? You want to to get dogs first of all neutered that, that are over there. Yeah. And and are you rescuing dogs that, that that are there now and trying to find homes for them? I mean, there's still soldiers in the position that I was now where they've actually taken on a stray dog which might have been used as a football, um, sadly, when they've been out, so they've Can't rescued the it. dog. Um, and so they want to then try and get the dog back to, obviously, the UK or to America or to Canada. Um, but also we thought, well, how can we help the local people in Afghan? Um, because, obviously, you know, going over there and rescuing dogs isn't really, obviously, helping them out. So the Newton programme will actually prevent rabies because, obviously, one of their biggest problems is the kids will torment the dogs um, and then the dogs will actually bite the children and yeah. then they'll get rabies. And, obviously, once out there they've actually shown the symptoms of it, it's fatal because there is no cure for them over there. Um, so we thought, by actually Newton, we can stop that problem. And, and it's education, isn't it? Yeah, well. totally, absolutely. You, you, you have to teach people that... Yeah. that you know, these lovely things don't need to be treated like I mean, for 10 years in Afghanistan, I mean, the, local, the kids didn't have any education, so there's a whole generation now that don't know any different. Um, and they don't realise, obviously, by tormenting the dog, they're probably going to get bitten, and then yeah, something else is... Well, you know, the, guy, the, the work that, that, that you guys in the services have done in Afghanistan is, as you know, appreciated by the people at home. But what you do here now... <laughs> you, you know, going that one step further... It's a really lovely thing. This is the book... No place like home. Terrific read. He's just come in. Patch dog. Patch dog. What have I got for you? Oh, yeah. Well, we fed him. <laughs> I think it's time we feed you. You know, isn't it? That would be you fantastic. Live, you, you're, uh, you're, you're, you're big lasagna fans. We are. Yeah. Right. Well, I'm gonna. I am. <laughs> <laughs> so let's uh, let's go and cook your favourite uh, over there with Paul Rankin. Let's have some lasagna. I'll see you next time. <laughs> I do have a dog. My dog is Bruce, and uh, he's like he thinks he's an Olympic athlete. Oh, dog. yeah, he's absolutely. Mad. Well, I've been having having a little bit of a There's love. Some hand so. wipes for you. Yeah. Do you want? Shall I do a bit of water? I I'll think the dog's better behaved than you, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Usually the case. So lasagna, everybody's favourite meal. Oh, great for the kids, absolutely. adults. Great for dinner parties, yeah. all that sort of thing. Um, Easy to prepare before the show. Before the before the show, listen to me. Before the, before the dinner party. Yeah, put it in very the much so. Um, so it's basically an Italian meat sauce, uh, like, a like a ragu bolognese type yeah. thing, and a white sauce, and then your pasta and cheese, and that's basically it. So Talk we've got it these. started here. In here, I've got uh, my beef mince. You can smell oh, it. Smells, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
I've got my onion, I have some mushrooms in here, and I need some green peppers in here. Okay. So you're going to dice me I up. remember what you said. You, you're going to crush me the garlic yeah, also? I'm going to start my white sauce. That's it. Be vigorous. I was be vigorous. Be vigorous, Michael. I it's was... Italian now. Fantastic. Grazie mille. Yeah. Bash it. Come on. Bash it. Bang. I had a boy. Now, Beautiful. I'm doing a cheeks white sauce here. All right. Where, you know how when you do can a white... I, can I just ask you before you do that? Whenever yeah. I've cooked up meat in a beef mince, I, there's like loads of, gre uh, uh, of, of grease. Uh, you, just, you, just you just strain it or what? Yeah, you just, uh, once you five fr finish frying your mince with your onions and stuff, just top it into a colander, let it sit for a little while, and it'll just uh, drain out. So you chuck everything in at the same time? Yeah, yeah, I do. So then we add the garlic. Okay. And then we add a, a, a perfect dice of green pepper, please, Michael. Yeah, that's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> Your knife skills get better, actually. So while I'm doing that, tell us about the white sauce. So the white sauce, the cheats white sauce. You know how you, you fry your, your uh, you gently fry your um, flour with your butter, and then you add your milk. But actually, if you just whisk it all from the start and keep whisking, you come out with a perfectly smooth sauce. White sauce, just milk, flour, yeah, and and butter, and a little butter. bit of nutmeg. I'm going to put in a bit oh, of nutmeg in. Okay, that's going nicely now. Okay. And you want to cook it, cook it past that stage where the water comes out. Cook the water away and get it browning nicely. Okay, a glass of wa red wine. Thank you. I will. No, come on in. <laughs> and that dissolves all those oh, lovely caramelized bits in the bottom. Yeah. Give it a little stir. Yeah. Okay. Next. Get in your tomatoes. Okay. Nice pinch of nutmeg going into that, has a lovely so, savoury A note. lot of people have their own kind of little twist, don't they, to the meat sauce, a little thing that... that yeah, my twist in. is I add ketchup, because uh, uh, oh. it adds that lovely... Yeah, you start whacking stuff in better than Better than a tomato puree? Ah, uh, it's kind of different. It kind of adds that sort of ripe, rich, cooked tomato flavour, which is really lovely, that little bit of zing and zest to it. A little bit of pepper going into the white sauce. See, it's thickening up beautifully, yeah, beautiful. no lumps. Nice big splash of Worcester. I'm so parents. looking for. Can you tell? I'm, I'm looking forward to this. And yeah. then a couple of stock cubes in there and the herbs. Crumbled or just bunched? Ah, just whack them in at this stage. Two and the herbs, herbs. we've got uh, uh, thyme and oregano going in. Right. And you basically, you cook that out until it looks like this. And then we start to build. Let's build. Okay, it. let's build. So, my, you want to do the pasta? You want to do. Yep, I'll do the pasta. Okay. First, we're going to build this in two layers. So. Half the mince goes in, and then add your your layers of pasta. Just the sort of pasta that's going to cook out. Um, so it's not cooked pasta. It's not. No, you don't have to do that anymore. And fresh. Yeah. Oh, we forgot to grate the cheese. Oh no! You put in half the weight. Oh, I put in half the weight sauce. Where's the big grater? <laughs> Come on! <laughs> I need half of that now. Go, go, yeah. yeah. In that goes on top of the white sauce. Service. In that goes, sir. I have been there. You're, oh, I'm wrecking the place now. It's a bit of action. In goes the rest of the meat sauce. Okay. A bit more. Do you want a bit more cheese on it, or is that going on? No, the top? no, on the top. On the top, that'll go. So that goes. More, on. more pasta. Ooh. And everyone's got their own recipe. <laughs> in it goes. More cheese. Okay. Then that we pop that into an oven. About 180 degrees Celsius for about 30 minutes, covered okay. with foil. And, then, and then the last 50 minutes, you take the foil off. This one goes in. Bang. This one comes out. Michael's getting excited. Does, oh. the, does the dog like lasagna? Of he course. does indeed. Oh, he, does. he can't have any. <laughs> oh, all right. Oh, yeah. Wait for the lettuce. <laughs> mean to the dog. Couldn't give him lasagna. It's probably not good for you. Is this garnish? Uh, yeah, a little bit of salad on each plate. And I think it's quite nice to let it just cool slightly. Yeah, beautifully artistic. Uh, a bit rough, actually. <laughs> it's it's oh, very, very particular, you know. I'm trying to teach him. See, presentation. One. Uh, do, do it. Do it. Well, not do it. Take these over. See? Oh, but you go. Grazie mille. Yeah. Hey. Ciao, Michael. Hey. There you go. While Paul is bringing mine over, it's time for you to qualify for today's competition. There's cash and a very special prize up for grabs. To enter, all you have to do is answer this question. On this day in 1533, Queen Elizabeth I was born. But what was she also known as? 
Was it A, the Queen of Hearts, B, the Virgin Queen, or C, the Red Queen? Call 09012-939944. Calls cost one pound from BT landlines. Calls from other networks may be higher, and from mobiles will be considerably more. Or text A, B, or C as your answer to 63360. Text costs one pound plus one standard network rate message. Red button viewers can enter by pressing red now, or enter online for free at ITV.com. Entrance must be 18 or over. Lines close at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Entries made after the closing time will not be counted, but may still be charged. Good luck, and we'll be playing catch the questions a little bit later. Okay, Ben, Lisa, what do you think of Paul's dish? Excellent. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you very much. You, do, you all, do you all the cooking at home, Lisa? No, no, we share. <laughs> yeah. Has he eaten all his? Patch had some. He has eaten all of his. Oh, does he need any more? <laughs> Tough. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've only got this bit left. It's delicious. Paul, great recipe. Mm. Mark, well, Andrew and Jordan, you were saying about the red wine. Mm. Mums at home, don't worry about the red wine. All the alcohol evaporates off you. They're giving the kids, it just adds a depth of flavour. Yeah, so right, Michael will be fine as well. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so, because of Jedwood coming up next. Thanks to Dan, Lisa, Paul and Pat. <laughs> <laughs>